morning, Trainiacs. That was a awesome little swim. Those 1,600 meters and an average pace of 132 per 100 meters. See, really fast for Taryn. Did uh, about 10 minutes of warm up and then four times sprinting out, going through the waves, 50 hard strokes across, 100 kind of steady race pace strokes, swim hard in, run across the beach. It's like Tower 26 deck ups. But today's epically long video is not about me. The pro panel happened today. We're bringing it to you in its entirety. It was good, really good. We had Lucy Charles, our pal Sarah True, Jeannie Seymour, Emma Pallant, new pal, Daniela Reef, Javier Gomez, Alistair Brownlee, James Kunama, Ben Canute, and Sam Appleton. Enjoy. A massive welcome to the 13th Isuzu Ironman 70.3 World Championship, Nelson Mandela Bay. Welcome to our professional athletes, welcome to the members of the media, lovely to have you with us. Um, I'm going to be chatting to them a little bit, hopefully getting them to do all the talking. For those of you I haven't met, I'm a Cape Tonian, I'm a South African, my name is Paul Kay. Very special, very, very emotional, proud moment to that uh, the Ironman 70.3 World Championship is here in South Africa for the second time only. Great to have it on African soil. Very special to have an incredible lineup of professional athletes. It's a deep, strong field, probably the best ever. Uh, we have several Olympic gold medals. We have an Olympic silver medal. We have many, many world champions sitting at this table and racing in various guises, including a Springbok rugby captain, World Cup winning um, rugby captain who's a bit racing as well. Um, we've got our defending champs who are back. We have 64% of the field are men, 36% of the field are our ladies, ladies racing Saturday and the men racing on Sunday. 185,000 athletes competed across 100 Ironman 70.3 events around the world to be here at the Isuzu Ironman 70.3 World Championship South Africa. We have seven African countries and Africa makes up 11% of the field racing here. The South Africans are the second biggest nation, which is superb. 40% of the field are from Europe. The biggest nation represented is the USA. I'm going to take you straight into the chat with our athletes. We're going to start with our ladies first. We'd like to start with uh, representing Great Britain, Lucy Charles. Lovely to have you with us, Lucy. Um, Second in Kona, you are a double world champion, 2015, 70.3 age group at uh, the 70.3 distance and Kona. Then you stepped up to pro racing and what a debut has been, what a great two years basically. You are the Ironman African champion winning here this year in, in April. Was that a test for Saturday? <laughs> Cheers Paul, yeah it's great to be here. Uh, great to be back after racing in April which went so well. Um, I have to admit, it definitely wasn't a uh, plan to come and race here. It was kind of a last minute thing. So it's very nice to have done the course in April and get a kind of feel for the place, which I absolutely love. So yeah, it's great to be back. You've done extremely well over the full distance. Reasonable success at 70.3 distance as well. Um, it's an incredible field you're lining up. You don't allow yourself to be intimidated regardless of who you're racing against. If anything, it, it just makes you race harder. Yeah, I think, I mean, I came from a swim background which was quite high pressure, so coming into this environment, I kind of try and take it all in my stride, I guess, and um, I love racing, so I guess that's why I'm here, because I love to race the best, so um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. The course is a little bit different to the African Champs course, um, your T1 and the swim down at Kings Beach. Have you had a look around, have you looked at the changes and how does this affect your tactics? Yeah, I mean, it's slightly different to the Ironman course. I think it's still um, going to be quite tough, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, it's a sea swim, which always suits me, so I'm not sure about how cold it's going to be. I haven't actually gone in there yet. I'll probably go and test that. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the cold, so uh, I'll try and get in and out as quick as possible, um, and then, yeah, I'll just go from there. It is expected that you will be at the sharp end of the field early on in that swim, but you've got a couple of ladies sitting next to you and a couple of ladies that are going to be lining up there as well who who will, will fight you all the way to, to swim exit. Uh, is the strategy, as always, to just hammer it from the gun? Yeah, I don't really think I've got another tactic, to be honest. That's just um, what comes natural to me, is just to go hard from the gun. 
Um, swim coaches my whole life have told me off for going out too quick, but um, yeah, I think I'll probably have to go with that. If I can bring some girls with me and they can help me along the way, then I'm happy to do that as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Great Britain's Lucy Charles. We move on to the USA's Sarah True, uh, Olympian, and uh, fourth place at the Ironman 70.3 World Championship Chattanooga last year, if I'm not mistaken. Awesome debut over the Iron Distance at the Ironman European Championship in Frankfurt. How did gearing up for the long distance debut, how did that affect your training, and how does that position you for Saturday? So basically all year I had two goals um, and that was to qualify for Kona and then to focus on the tail end of my season uh, being 70.3 world champs and Kona. So we really had kind of a slow build and this is kind of the, the middle of, of my end of season peak. Um, so hopefully this is a great tune up for Kona. Really, Frankfurt, the, the goal was to qualify and punch my ticket to uh, the Big Island. And you know, now it's, it's all about racing a bit fitter, a bit faster, and a bit more ready to go. In 70.3 racing, you've never had worse than fourth position. And that fourth was you know, basically a year ago in Chattanooga in the World Champs. That fourth place, that race, what, is that, what did you take from that that you're using on Saturday? You know, I think every year is different. I think the, the field is stronger here than was last year at 7.3 uh, Chattanooga World Champs. You know, obviously the course is different, but also I'm a different athlete. I have another year of experience. I'm much fitter um, than I was this point last year. So hopefully my result reflects that. Um, you know, when, when you finish fourth at the World Champs, there's not a lot of room to move up, but <laughs> obviously I would love to, to end up on the podium. But really, racing, if everybody brings their A-game on Saturday, then who knows where. If I'm top 10, then that, that's probably going to be a pretty good day in this field. The USA, Sarah True. Thank you very much, Sarah. We now speak to one of our South Africans in the Isuzu Ironman 70.3 World Championship here in Nelson Mandela Bay, South Africa. Jeannie, being South African, racing the World Championship in South Africa, is, is that a whole different ball game? Uh, yes, I mean, like you said, it's kind of emotional. Like, I'm getting choked up right now. Um, this is where my journey started in triathlon, and for it to be in South Africa, I wouldn't have imagined even sitting here um, amongst the best in the sport, so I'm pretty humbled to be sitting here. Um, it just goes to show how far I've come. I left home when I was 20, trying to make it in the sport. I was just a young girl with a dream and um, I kind of tried my best with, with just knowing that I have hard work going for me. So I pretty much threw myself in the deep end trying to make it as a professional and um, I, I'm really proud to be sitting here as one of the few South Africans not only in this field but as a professional. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty stoked. <laughs> Jeannie. Lots of 70.3 wins already. You started off 2018 with a great win at the Ironman 70.3 South African Buffalo City. Only the second South African woman to win that race. Um, you weren't sure about coming to do that race, then you did come and do it. The win, was that kind of like, okay, if I can win in, in Buffalo City, it's South African soil, it's only three hours away, I can, I can win at PE. <laughs> I don't think I was thinking quite like that. It was um, kind of just my off season. You know, we take a pretty big break and in December, which is kind of the peak season here in South Africa. So it was a spur of a moment decision to come in January, but um, it was kind of just tribute to how far I've come. And I just wanted to come home and race after being in the States for five years. And um, I think it, it was really good for me to come back on home soil and race. and. Um, even though I wasn't at my best shape, I just really enjoyed the, the experience and um, I think, you know, having a home crowd really does go far away and um, I was out there on the course, I was suffering, I had Emma Palin breathing down my neck, I really thought she was going to catch me, but um, somehow I dug deep and um, I, I was able to win, which was a huge surprise and I think that's why I love doing the sport because Sometimes in those moments when it's the hardest and you want to give up and you can draw some strength out of yourself and, and somehow surprise yourself, those are the best moments and um, that's, that's why I keep doing the sport. 
You spoke a little bit about the support in, in East London. The Ironman African Champs course here is renowned for its spectator support, voted the best run course in the world. Um, there's going to be a lot of that out there. The gazebo is going to be up and down Marine Drive. The support's going to be epic. I, I remember Reynard Tissing saying that previously that the support sometimes threw him off because it kind of distracted him from race plan, adrenaline kicked in, and suddenly he was running 30 seconds a K faster. How do you plan to use the support? Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, my focus is to be staying present in the moment. Um, and I'm the type of athlete, I just want to get on my feet. And, and once I do that, it's kind of um, pilot mode. I don't really have to think. I think, yes, it helps to have people spur you on. And yes, you may, may go out a bit faster, but um, that's kind of when you have to be in the moment and know, okay, I need to settle in first and, and then kind of use that like encouragement when the moments are tough or towards the end when you can kind of just let everything go. Final question for you, what did you come down the finish line at the 70.3 World Championship Chattanooga last year and you were disappointed with it? Yes, um, you know I didn't have the race I wanted um, at the World Championship last year, that's, um, that's honestly how my experience was and I think it's only because uh, the World Championship is a very special day because it's the only day out of the year where you get this depth and high competition, especially for the women. It's like you have 50 women who are trying to battle it out for a title and we don't usually get that in any other races and so the dynamic is different and there's tactics and you know what, I, didn't, I wasn't prepared for that and my usual style of racing of kind of getting onto the run and chasing people down, it didn't work for me because I, I, I made some mistakes and what's, what's great about that is I learned a lot and I get to, to taste that out this time round and see where I stack up. First break and starter, Ginny Seymour for South Africa, ladies Thank and gentlemen. You. We move across to Emma Pallant. Emma Pallant second at the Ironman 70.3 World Championship Chattanooga last year. Did her Ironman debut here at the Ironman African Championship, it didn't quite go according to plan. Yeah, it definitely uh, didn't, and um, I, really, I don't want to say a moment that um, I want to forget because I learned so much from it. Um, yeah, we trained probably way too hard into it. Um, I felt probably the fittest that I'd ever been, and um, yeah, I was pretty confident, and, and it just really taught me a lesson about um, preparation for a race and, and always expect the unexpected, and, and it's how you deal with it. Um, a DNF is never nice or never easy to do, especially with all the amazing support. Um, I'm sure everyone will see it this weekend, but it was really hard to kind of stop when there's just so many people out there that, that could cheer you through anything. Um, but yeah, I had a, a season to focus on um, afterwards. So, Lots of Ironman 70.3 wins. That stellar second last year at the 70.3 World Championship in Chattanooga. You also did finish your Ironman Ironman Austria third place on your first full Ironman finish, which was just, what, two months ago, beginning of July. Um, you're not unfamiliar to having world titles to your name. Yeah, I kind of, um, I love to race without the swim <laughs> for my world titles. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I won't, I won't hope for the win to make it too choppy to swim. But, um, yeah, I like, I like the challenge of, of coming to to try these um, world titles that, that do have a bit of a weakness there. Um, and I guess it's fun to chase all day. Ladies and gentlemen, Great Britain's Emma Pallant, second last year. What does Saturday hold? She passes the microphone across to our defending champion, Switzerland's Daniela Reef. Welcome back, Daniela. Nice to have you back in Nelson Mandela Bay. Three Ironman 70.3 titles, three titles on the big island, an unbelievable 2018 so far, the world's best time over this Ironman 70.3 in Gdynia just a short while back. That rest that you and the coach decided to take end of last season, moving to this season, seems to have really worked. Yeah, definitely. It was a, a good call to you know have the um, the courage, courage, courage. How do you say? Um, courage to actually you know take a step back because um, only then you can go two step two steps forward and. Um, yeah, it was. I had a good break. Um, I felt really hungry and you know motivated to train hard again. And to be honest, it took me a long time to feel kind of like an athlete again. But 
ones I did, um, yeah, it was going going really well, and I think um, it's paying off really well. Like in the end of the season now, I'm feeling not tired yet, and and yeah, ready to to race and hungry for more. You've raced here before. You've won here before the African Championship. I'm sure you learned a lot about the course, you've learned a lot about the conditions, the road surface, weather to be expected, wind to be expected, all of that has gone into the recipe for hopefully success again on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a challenging course. I think the ocean can be quite rough um, and, uh, and then the bike as well is, is, uh, it can be windy, it's challenging and uh, I really like that. So it's definitely a good thing I've raced here. I have good memories from last year, especially Kind of, it feels weird to be back here. Um, after last year, I was kind of injured. I was not even sure if I could do the race, and um, I surprised myself um, during the race, and it went much better than I expected. And so, yeah, I have good memories from that. And, and now, um, being back here, um, feeling ready to race and being fit makes it even more um, special to uh, you know look forward to the race. You like the pressure. You like strong fields. You like challenging courses. You love winning. I mean, it's, it's an incredible field you're racing against. And, and I, I seem to remember Jody Swallow interviewing you recently and talked about you actually, you're trying to beat not just the other girls, you're trying to beat the boys as well. Well, no, that's not really what I'm focusing on this weekend. I think uh, we have, as the women, we have our own race. It's very great that we can race each other without any other distractions. Not that men are distractions, but... Um, <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> no, I wouldn't call that. But um, no, it's, it's great we have our own race. And what I meant is also that I think, um, you know, like, I'm not trying to beat men at all. I mean, I'm very realistic, but I think it's interesting to to see, like, as a woman, how far, how close can you get, and um, it's something um, that motivates me to also, I think, you know, even go that um, other level up to to just try to improve. And I think, um, yeah, you should never try to stop improving. But um, yeah, I definitely know this weekend will be um, a challenging weekend. Um, there's lots of really good competitions here, and. I'm, I'm really happy to be here I'm with the best in the world. I think we have a great field in the women's field to, um, on Saturday. And yeah, it will be, it will be full on from the start. Um, there's a lot of good fast swimmers and a lot of good fast bikers and a lot of good fast runners. So um, yeah, let's, let's, um, let's be all excited for Saturday and hopefully we have a good fair race. Sounds like it's going to be an incredible race, basis on your description there of brilliant swimmers, brilliant bikers, brilliant, brilliant runners, brilliant triathletes in a wonderful setting. The crowds are pretty good too. You've experienced the crowds before, Daniela. They're huge fans of you. Um, just for the, some of the foreign media, if you can give a sense of what those crowds are like. Yeah, the atmosphere here um, last year was really amazing. I, um, I felt really welcomed from the start. I got here, I uh, feel like the people are very passionate about this event and um, yeah, I feel really good here. Like, you know, you feel like, um, yeah, I just feel like a bit like at home. Um, it's very nice to be here and, and I think, especially on the run course, the atmosphere is, is amazing. Having um, the barbecues along and, you know, this good atmosphere, people cheering for you is, is um, really special. Um, and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to have some barbecue after the race too. And we'll teach you to say bride. There we go, Jeannie's teaching oh, already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what you've got on your wrist? It's easy, Danielle. You know what you've got on your wrist? Bri. Just yes, start I with just the bri. That. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our world champion, Ironman 70.3 world champion, our Ironman world champion, Switzerland's Daniel Reef. Merci Were We're going to pass now to our gentleman. We're going to start with Australia. We're going to chat to Sam Appleton. Sam, uh, very much a 70.3 specialist. Hopefully you're not allergic to beautiful proteas. <laughs> Lovely to have you here first time in Nelson Mandela Bay. Uh, your, your impressions so far before we talk about the racing? Yeah, thanks. It's, uh, it's, it's great to be here in Port Elizabeth. It's um, a beautiful spot. It actually reminds me a lot of Australia, the coastline. I was riding down Marine Drive uh, yesterday and it, yeah, it kind of reminded me of home. So yeah, it's good to be here and have that familiar, uh, yeah, that familiar scenery. More than two handfuls worth of Ironman 70.3 victories in your Palmares already. Fourth at Ironman 70.3 Chattanooga last year. You've had a fifth before that, so the natural progression would be? Third, hopefully. But I wouldn't say no to winning either, to be honest. But, um, yeah, fourth last year was great. Um, I was, you know, fourth's a great spot, but 
kind of left me wanting a little bit more. Um, I think a couple of things, you know, I didn't really play out to my strengths last year. So, yeah, I definitely know I've got a little bit more in me. And, um, yeah, hopefully I can show that on, on Sunday. Being from Australia, not unaccustomed to sea swims, is that where it's all going to start in terms of the pressure and the tactics? Yeah, for sure. I'm hoping for uh, a little bit of swell out there. I grew up with surf lifesaving in Australia, um, doing nippers and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely used to swimming in the waves. Hopefully there's uh, a little bit of swell out there, um, despite what some of the girls said earlier. I'm hoping, fingers crossed. You are very much the 70.3 specialist, which we've mentioned already, and a lot of the, the gentlemen you are racing with are also racing 70.3 and the full distance Ironman, lots of eyes on Kona already as well. Do you think this gives you an advantage? Um, I think, I've never done an Ironman, but I know that it can be really hard to focus on both 70.3 and Ironman, but you know, if there's people that can do it, it's pretty much all the people racing this weekend. So um, I don't think it necessarily gives me an advantage. People, people aren't coming in here tired. They're not using this as a training race. It's the world championships, you know, people are, people are rocking up to, to win and um, yeah, I've got no doubt that even the guys focusing on Kona are also focusing on this race this weekend as well. Lovely. Thank you very much, Sam Appleton for Australia. We pass the microphone to Great Britain's Alistair Brownlee, two-time Olympic gold, many world champion titles to his name as well. Welcome to Nelson Mandela Bay. You've raced in South Africa, I know in Cape Town at the WTS Racing. Um, you were going to race Ironman 70.3 Chattanooga, if I'm not mistaken, but then you needed to have surgery. Interesting. Quick recovery. You raced, the, I think, with Frodo in Bahrain in, in one of those relay races. And then you went to win Dubai. Two wins in the 70.3 distance this year already. Everything looking good for another world title that you, you want to add to the Palmares? Yeah, I hope so. Um, it's been a, a kind of up and down year, obviously. Um, it was a big goal of mine last year to, to qualify and race in the, the World Championship last year. Unfortunately, didn't get the chance to do that. Um, had to have that operation on my hamstring, so that kind of goal, I guess, rolled over to this year. Um, and then the focus became yeah, qualifying and being here in the best possible position to, to race well. So, um, yeah, I've had a, a good few months of training and um, looking forward to race. Alistair, you love... Oh, I can't... In imply what you do or don't love, but it always appears on the big stage when the pressure's on and you're up against the best athletes, that's when you just produce your best. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think um, I've been racing all kinds of different sports disciplines for a long time and um, yeah, I think firstly I love racing and I think I'm good at getting the, the best out of myself when it counts. Um, sometimes that can be yeah, just on the morning racing my brother, but sometimes it's on the, the world stage as well. So um, yeah, I think it the, the training, I think the focus it takes in the, in the months leading up, I think is really important to me. Um, and that process of going through, of getting here in the best possible shape to, to race well. The focus on slightly longer distance racing and the non-drafting format racing, is that perhaps, did that affect the recent uh, IT European Championship? Yeah, well this year, um, and especially the last few months, has all been really kind of tailored around this race. So uh, I've been training hard and, and training for the longer stuff, spending more time on my time trial bike and, and doing slightly more specific work for this kind of racing. Um, so yeah, I went into that a bit tired, but I, on the other hand, I, I want to keep my hands just in enough short distance IT racing um, in case I want to I do it in the next few years. So uh, I'm, I'm walking that tightrope a bit, but yeah, this has definitely been my focus. So I'm, I'm hoping uh, I'll have, uh, have done everything I need to, to produce a good race at the weekend. The triathlon media and the sports media have been throwing the whole Brownlee, Gomez, Frodino, all on the same race, everybody drooling at, at the battle. Um, you've raced, you've raced Javi many, many times. Wonderful competition between you guys. Um, huge respect between you as well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think it's kind of, um, it's cool really that we've uh, raced so many different races over such a long time. You know, I saw a, a thing the other day saying it's 10 years since the Olympics in Beijing, so yeah, we're talking over a decade of racing and now over different disciplines and um, yeah, I think that's quite a good thing and um, there's a lot of respect there and yeah, it'll be interesting to, to see how it goes and hopefully goes in, into the future as well with uh, even, even more different distances, distances. I think that was Alistair's hint at Kona. Um, thank you very much Great Britain's Alistair Brownlee. We move across to our next South African, originally from Natal, but um, got the triathlon virus here in Nelson Mandela Bay. 
Um, you might or might not know the story. James, as a volunteer initially, James, was that 2004 when we did the test event, or was it after yeah. that? No, 2004, the test event, and then the, the next year again was a, was a volunteer here on the course, uh, closing the roads until midnight uh, and watching these crazy people do this crazy sport and thinking, what is wrong with these people? Um, but it didn't take me very long to, to pick up a bike um, and do a duathlon uh, and then figured I needed to, to figure out how to swim. And yeah, uh, in 2007, I did my first Ironman here at the, on this course. Uh, and the rest is history, I guess. From volunteer to Ironman champion, sub eight hours, fourth, fifth at Kona as well. James, South Africa is a sports crazy country. Triathlon is growing. Do you feel as one of our preeminent South African triathletes that you, you have a big responsibility to carry, generally and on Sunday? Um, hopefully not too much responsibility uh, on, on Sunday. I, I don't think uh, my result is necessarily going to make a big difference to, to the sport of triathlon in the country. Um, I think hosting this event here, though, will make a big difference to the sport of triathlon. Um, it is growing and it's massive and, you know, South Africans are endurance sport mad. Uh, from the Comrades Marathon, uh, the Doozy Canoe Marathon, uh, through to Ironman, and mar everyone's run a marathon. Um, when I was growing up, you weren't a runner until you'd done Comrades. Um, that was just the norm. Uh, um, so yeah, South Africans are endurance sport mad, and you see it here with the Ironman. You we were talking earlier about the crowds. Uh, Daniela was talking about how they, they line the streets um, with their bras, and, and you know they pitch their tents two days before the race so that they can um, reserve their spot on the course, um, which they don't do anywhere else in the world on an Ironman course. Um, and I'm, they'll be doing that here for this weekend too. Uh, you'll, you'll see on, on the weekend the, the, the level of support, the level of um, enthusiastic support, but also knowledgeable support um, on endurance sport here in South Africa is, is pretty special. Uh, and to be the only male South African on the, on the start line on Sunday, um, is, is pretty special to head up that endurance sport crazy nation. Your path to becoming an Ironman 70.3 and an Ironman 70.7 Ironman champion wasn't that conventional. I mean, you didn't start with an Ironman 70.3, you started with Ironman, and then you kind of worked backwards into the 70.3s and, and made your way back up again. You're, you're more of the, the, the longer distance specialist, I think would be fair, but you're lining up with some incredible swimming, biking, and leg speed. <laughs> Are you looking forward to the Suffer Fest? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been over 10 years now. I, I'm pretty experienced at racing. I think um, I've been through it all. Uh, I didn't do the conventional thing. I didn't go the RTU route and then get longer and longer and longer. I did jump straight into the long distance. But like I say, that was how I grew up. Uh, the, the longer, the better. Um, it was Ironman just spoke to me from the beginning. Um, and yeah, I, I do still enjoy the Ironman, maybe more than the 70.3. Uh, but having said that, I really enjoy the, the 70.3, the intensity of it, uh, the head-to-head -head racing of it, um, that, that you don't get so much in Ironman. Um, Ironman is very much a personal slot, get to the finish line um, first and foremost, whereas 70.3 is very much a head-to-head -head race, and we're going to see some pretty hectic head-to-head -head racing this weekend. Thank you very much, South Africa's James Kahneman. All the best to you as well as we hand the microphone to the USA's Ben Knut, Olympian, Ironman 70.3 champion, and leading Ironman 70.3 Chattanooga for a long time until the gentleman on your right decided no, he wanted that top step. Very special day, superb result, and uh, what's happening on Sunday? I think everybody wants to know what's going to happen on Sunday. Um, yeah, last year was uh, a pretty amazing race for me, and uh, you've been talking about how it's special to have uh, world championships at your home, and I was able to experience that last year, and I think I drew a lot from the crowds there in Chattanooga, and I'm excited to see the support that everybody keeps talking about um, on Sunday. And as far as the racing goes, I just know it's going to be really fast, kind of no matter the conditions. What are your thoughts on the course? Uh, I think it's great. Um, you have the ocean swim, um, potentially extremely windy bike with um, some hills, and then a great run course along the coast. And um, well, I think it's a pretty challenging course. It also seems like everything rolls pretty fast there. So, um, yeah, I think it could potentially be a pretty quick day overall. The second place in Chattanooga. 
Were you surprised? Yeah, you know, um, I figured the race could go a bunch of different ways. I knew the, the guys on the start list and that it'd be a tough race. And um, I just tried to race my race plan and I went out and um, I guess raced uh, straight to that plan and um, had just about the perfect day. Um, and then slightly went under that as Javi passed me at mile eight. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't really change every, anything from that race. It was a, a great result and I went in hoping for a top 10 and figured I could place top five and maybe crack into the podium on a really good day. And um, yeah, found myself at the front of the race for most of the day and kind of surprising myself a little bit. Your impressions of South Africa and Nelson Mandela Bay so far? Um, it's been great. I mean, I think that it's super scenic. Um, everybody's been really friendly. I've been welcomed with uh, open arms and feel almost right at home here. So uh, just excited to get out on the course on Sunday. USA is the number one nation in terms of number of athletes represented. Do you think when you're out there racing, you're going to get a lot of USA and a lot of support? Uh, I hope so. It, uh, I think it might feel a little bit like a home race, even though it took 30 hours to get here. But um, <laughs> Yeah, it's great to have a, a big contingent of U.S. athletes, and uh, I'm excited to see them going out on the course and racing hard as well. Thank you very much. The USA has been Canute. We hand the microphone over to our defending men's champion, Javier Gomez, for Spain. Javi, when you crossed the finish line in Chattanooga, you became an eight-time world champion across various disciplines. Welcome to Nelson Mandela Bay. Welcome to South Africa as the defending champion. Um, your thoughts so far? Thank you both. Uh, it's great to be here. My first time in Nelson Mandela Bay, even though I raced in South Africa many times in Cape Town and different places, but um, I heard great things of this race. It's a world championship, so I had a chance to see the course yesterday and this morning, and it looks fantastic, so I'm really excited. Your, your take on the, the, the media hype, for lack of a better term, of the, the gomez brownlee Frodino battle? Keeping in mind it's a massive field and there's so many other amazing athletes here as well. Yeah, I wouldn't forget these other guys sitting here and others who are not here. It's a great field and um, obviously racing Alistair and uh, Jan is, is very special as well because uh, we had great battles in the past, especially in our ITU days. So uh, it's great to race them again in a different distance here in a world championship. So yeah, as, uh, as a world championship race, you're supposed to race the best ones in the sport, so uh, yeah, uh, that makes it uh, more exciting. The focus in 2018 has been a little bit different for you. The debut of Ironman, a brilliant debut, that second place, unbelievable 240 run, sub, sub eight finish there with, with Braden. Um, mentally, I would imagine, and not only physically, there's, there's been a lot of change for you in terms of the focus and, and the planning around the training, also building up for, for Sunday. Yeah, it's been a different year. Uh, I was used to race uh, quite a lot more, uh, almost every weekend in ITU and different traveling a lot. Now it's more about training, get a good preparation for the big races which are towards the end of the season, like this one in Kona. So um, yeah, I had to be a bit more patient. I like racing, so but that, the good thing is that I'm more angry now races. You know, I want to uh, try to do well here and, and then eventually uh, Kona, which is the main goal of the year so a few things changed uh, on training as well but um, yeah after you know when you race the same type of race for so many years as I did in ITU it's always uh, exciting to, to you know have a new challenge and new goals and um, yeah it makes it more uh, motivating to, to train every day. Thank you very much, muchas gracias Javier Gomez for Spain. Please, one more time, a massive thank you. A huge thank you to our athletes who have joined us here this morning and all the athletes who will be racing. The Ironman, the Suzu Ironman 70.3 World Championship. Saturday, our professional and age group women. Sunday, our professional and age group men. This is the Suzu Ironman 70.3 World Championship, Nelson Mandela Bay. Have yourselves a wonderful race weekend and good luck to our athletes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.